Guys, I apologize for being a little late here. I had uh, something I had to tend to. It couldn't wait. But I'll do an extra good job of giving you all you need. How's that? Um, how's Gavin doing? And is there any update on his status? He's doing well. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's going to be fine. You, you would expect him to be available for Saturday? I do. Uh, and reevaluating the tape, watching his, his game, how, what, did, what did you think? And did it look any better than it looked on Saturday? What, what were your takeaways from evaluating the tape of his play? I think what I said Saturday, I, I you know, I watched him pretty closely because you have a really young quarterback in there. I felt he looked comfortable. I don't think he felt out of place. I felt that uh, he ran an operation. Um, and then he made some really good throws, and then he made a mistake, and then he made a uh, another mistake that were two, two turnovers. But um, he shows why we're – excited about his future. That, that's what I thought I could come away with Saturday was it's a matter of time. You know, I do believe that. I think it's a, uh, a when, not an if. You just got to keep going. And, you know, we're, we're building something here, and he's a big part of it. Uh, but so are a bunch of other guys that are working their tails off. So just keep moving. Greg, a majority of the scholarship roster is eligibility-wise either a freshman or sophomore. What are you looking to see out of these guys over the next uh, four games? Well, I'm, I'm not really looking at the four games, Richie. I'm looking at this one game. Uh, it's real dangerous to start looking past anything. Um, what I look for, and you know, I, a lot of people say, well, that's coach speak, right? And people like more exciting stuff. But if it's true, then it's not coach speak. It's just how I do it. Is right now, I'm totally focused on game planning Michigan because that's what we do on Mondays. And totally focused on meeting with my leadership council. And totally, like those are the things that I really focus on because that's what's, at he, you know, here right now. And, you know, we have a saying around here, the journey is the destination. The world isn't made like that, right? The world is, you know, you got to get to that spot. You know, I really believe what we're doing today is really that spot. And do it the best you can. And that may sound corny, that may sound coach speak, but I give everybody a little advice. It's kind of a good way to roll. So that's the way we do it. So that's what we're on right now is how do we get better today? And those are the only things we can control. Tomorrow we'll have a Tuesday practice, and that'll be the only thing we control. Uh, Coach, there's uh, some concern around the Big Ten about teams sharing tunnels, especially after the two incidents at Michigan. What's the procedure here, and what are your con do you have any concerns in general about that? You know, I, I witnessed the same thing, so I understand the question. Um, we've never had an incident that I know of, at least when I've been here, we haven't had an incident. Um, we have great – I think our guys do a great job with – who goes when, and it's all very controlled. And maybe maybe some people feel like it's too controlled, but case in point, it needs to be controlled. And uh, that's just the way we're built right now. There'll be a day when we have two tunnels. I'm not worried about that. But right now, this is the way we're built. So this is the way we'll do it. But we have a plan, that's for sure. Michigan obviously has one of the best running games in the country. I mean, what does it take to kind of limit a team like that as much as you can? Well, it's hard. I mean. Um, why do they have a good running game? They have a very good offensive line. They have two really good backs, probably more, but two that play a lot, and a quarterback that can run and pass. So you have to defend the pass. You have to defend his run. The offensive line's doing a good job blocking, and they got two upper echelon running backs. So it's, uh, it's one of the better outfits in America on offense. That's why you look at where they're ranked in all those st statistical categories. They're up in the top. Um, have we played against people like that? Yeah, we have. We have to do a great job. We have to be at our very best to have a chance to slow them down. Are you going to stop them? No. No one stopped them. Um, but we're going to do everything we can to the best of our ability and see where that stacks up. Conversely, about your run attack without Sam, you guys struggled a bit against Minnesota. Was mm -hmm. that is the offensive line? Is that the running backs? And just on Sam, do you have an update on when he'll have the, the surgery this week? Yeah. Uh, first off, Sam is out at the site where he's getting surgery as we speak. 
uh, the surgery's tomorrow. Um, why we didn't have an effective running game? Well, first and foremost, Minnesota had something to do with that. They're really good on defense, and not just against us. They've been really good in rush defense against everyone. Um, that's why they're ranked where they are. We didn't do our best. Um, we missed some block combinations. We missed some reads in the run game. Um, when you drop some of those RPOs, they're not quite as scary to the defense anymore, right? So it all goes together. Everything, it's never every, if it was one reason, you make a change in that person and it's fixed. It's never one thing or one person. Um, but it's, it certainly wasn't effective. I mean, I agree with you on that. So we're working very hard to figure out what we can do to, to help that. And uh, Michigan is equally adept at stopping the run. They're really, really good, maybe even better. They have a really strong defense. The biggest front we'll play against uh, up front defensively. Their linebackers run really well. Their secondary knows where to fit. Um, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Greg, in the past, Krukshank's made some special, uh, crazy special teams plays, um, some returning balls for touchdowns multiple times. Um, this year, it seems like it's a little more conservative back there. Is it just a matter of him still being in recovery, kind of, or is that a scheme thing? Some of it has been his recovery, yeah. Um, initially, he wasn't overly confident in doing that. That's where he did get hurt. But I think Aaron is is uh, feeling good about it now. And, it, you know, we've been a little more aggressive, as you can see. Um, in the punt game, the punt return game, I think he's equally effective. I mean, unfortunately, we had one call back that was for a touchdown. So, you know, what makes that feel better? You, you hit one or two home runs and you feel great about it all season long. You don't and you don't. So... We have to do a better job. I know you said you started Gavin because you saw an opportunity against uh, against Minnesota. Is there any inkling of who would be the starter this week based on what you've seen with Michigan? No, Gavin's going to be our starter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you just elaborate on why? Ben? Same reasons that I said before. Uh, you know, the I think he showed what he's capable of. Now we have to get consistent at doing that. But that's not just Gavin. You know, as, as, as I've talked to you guys before, in building a program, there's a lot of steps. The last step is consistency because it's the hardest step, right? To do something right once, once you get taught the skill and you know the scheme, you can do it right once. But can you do it right over and over and over again against an opponent that's trying to make you do it wrong? That's consistency, and that's where we're, we're working to get there. I'm all for that too. How does the way that you navigate this rebuild, kind of the roller coaster nature of it, the ups and downs, how does that compare to the first time you went through it in terms of your own expectations, the message within the program, and things like that? That's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. Yeah, I haven't thought of that. I know I felt it, but I haven't really thought about it. Yeah, I mean, I. When we lose, it's really, really tough. And, and I'm not special in that way. I think when you spend so much time, you know, six days totally committed to that other than sleeping and eating and, you know, sleep, you know, what, what else do you do as a coach? And then you, it doesn't work. And the way we lost Saturday, it just rips you rips your apart. But the beautiful thing about our sport is you got to get up and you got to get ready, right? Because six days, another one's coming. And, uh, that I love about my job. Um, is it similar? I guess it is, if you if you think about it. Um, yeah, in a lot of ways it is. You guys are strong defensively in a lot of categories. Red zone defense, I think 18 trips, 18 scores. Is there any, th any common factor there, and is there a concern at all in, in that category? Well, there's certainly concern because we're not doing well there. Uh, Joe and I have talked about it. We kind of, we've spent some extra time on it in practice. We've looked at it. Um, when you're doing well in just about every other category and then not on that, you know, you sit there and say, man, is it is it scheme? It always comes down to, is it scheme or technique, right? Is it the person playing? Like, those are the things you got to look at. And scheme is what the coaches come up with. And technique is how they teach the technique. And then the players is, you know, you have choices who to play. So are we doing the right things? 
you know, certainly we haven't figured it out yet or we, it would be looking a lot better right now. So something we're aware of. It's not something that, uh, you know, we haven't talked a lot about. But uh, right now we haven't figured it out. Coach, um, in hindsight, obviously injuries had a lot to do with what you were able to do at quarterback. But would it have been more beneficial for your team to play one quarterback at a time as opposed to rota the rotation that we saw at times? I think you answered your own question with your preamble, right? We didn't have choices. You know, it wasn't like we had choices. We had the beginning of the season, Noah was out. Now, did we make that clear? No, because we thought that was a competitive advantage for people not to know. Some have told me it was the worst kept secret in, in, the, in Eastern football. So, okay, if they knew, they knew. That's good. But people always like to say they knew, you know. I have inklings about stuff, too. You know, there was a lot of stuff being said last week about their quarterback situation, none of, it, none of which came true. So, believe me, people say they know. You think you know, but you don't know until the guy trots out onto the field and plays. So, at that point, we had two quarterbacks, um, which neither one of them was ready to take the reins. So we were going to let them both get experience and see how it went. Um, then Noah started to re-enter the picture. He had experience, but he physically wasn't ready. Um, again, you don't want to put anybody out there exclusively until they're ready to do it. Otherwise, you can really harm a guy's development. So when you kind of mix it up a little bit, no one is really the guy that didn't do it well enough. Or when you win, oh, look at that. They put it together enough to win. There's a science to me in developing guys and when to bring them along. And, you know, obviously we've made that move. And um, by your, aunt, you know, what I said to you that, that uh, Gavin's starting, it kind of tells you what, what time we feel it is now. Um, just with Aaron Lewis, it seems like he's becoming a bigger and bigger focal point of opposing game plans. I mean, how do you kind of see him adjusting to that and kind of, you know, improving in that? Well, there's no doubt, right? I mean, you saw what Minnesota did. They double, double teamed him most of the time. Two things there. Number one, get used to it, Aaron, because you've earned it. Number two, how about some other guys? We've got to show up bigger now. Um, not that guys haven't done that. I mean, I think we've had some guys that have really raised up, but we're young up there, too. Uh, with the exception of Fetty, really, that's uh, that's a young group. So understanding when he gets the double team, what does that mean for the rest of us? How are they gonna How are they gonna block the rest of us? Um, and you know, it's always different when it's first and second down, normal downs, what we call normal downs, and then when it's third down or situational football, because then you're attacking just the pass. Um, when it's normal downs, you got to play the run and the pass, so it's not quite as easy to to kind of rig it up to help somebody come free. So it's a challenge, but as guys get more experienced, it's a feel thing as well. You know, I feel the protection sliding to me. There's certain things I can do. I feel the protection sliding away from me. There's certain things I can do. That takes repetition, and, and we're getting better at it, but it's just not, again, as to, to Pat's thing, consistency, right? Consistency, being able to feel it every time. Now, nobody does it every time, but you know what I mean. Nine out of ten times you feel the slide, you shoot the, you shoot the twist game, it happens naturally. You know, it's called a, a natural game. But it's anything but natural. It happens over time because guys feel it. Um, but, yeah, we need to get better at all those things. And it's not from a lack of trying. These, this team is just busting their rear end every day. I have no complaints about how hard we're working, studying, meeting, taking care of our bodies. That's what makes it even harder as a head coach. You see your, you see your guys hurt. They put so much into it and how much it hurts them. But, hey, welcome welcome to big-time college football, right? There's, there's, there's going to be a winner and loser every week. And right now we've won it for and we've lost it for. So got a great opportunity Saturday. So, again, apologize for uh, being a couple minutes late, and uh, hopefully you got what you needed.